to come. I promise. All right. 12 team super flex PPR 1.75 tight end premium start 10. It's a six point per passing touchdown. John Bauer, are you going Lamar Jackson or the 101 and the 109? Go ahead, man. Clay, you're jumping right into it with me. No foreplay, no pleasantries. No foreplay, Not, nothing. No, no, no flowers, nothing. Uh, Not th- this one, it, it's close for me, especially in a six point passing touchdown league. Uh, with it being 12 team and start 10, if it were start 11, start 12, I, I would be a little bit more intrigued in the package. But at this point, I, I know there's been a lot of conversation this offseason about the longevity of some of these rushing quarterbacks. And, well, sure. you got people like C.J. Stroud, Patrick Mahomes, you know, they're they're more your prototypical uh, pocket passers that are able to move when necessary. But for me, I'm still going Lamar Jackson, even over Caleb Williams and, you know, 109, let's say it's Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, sure. You know, it, it at this point, I'm still going Lamar, and I think Caleb's going to be fantastic, but I still have a tier of separation between the two, and 109 isn't going to bridge that gap for me. Nice. Yeah, this is kind of a burden hand situation with with Lamar Jackson, right? It's not often Lamar Jackson shows up in your inbox. I guess the 101 either, but yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I, John, I haven't get, been seeing any, and I, and I know you put in your little blurb uh, on Twitter that we're going to keep this to 48 minutes, so I won't get sidetracked too often. We, no, dude, honestly, we can go as long as you want, man. We were like, what, seven minutes late, which is kind of on point for Dynasty Trades in five. So go ahead. What do you got in mind? No, no, no I was just going to say, like, you're right. You don't really see trade offers that include like the top seven quarterbacks typically. And you certainly don't see it whenever it's something involving the 101. And it, I think more likely you would see an offer of Lamar Jackson for your picks as opposed to the other way around. You know, I, I think for the most part, people that have like the 101 and 109 uh, plus some other picks, they might be in a situation where they're going to want to hang on to those picks or move off of them. Uh, as opposed to consolidating up into Lamar Jackson. But I still think it's a super fun one to look at. Yeah, it's a it's a fun one. And when you look at trades like this, at least it's we're talking stud for stud, right, John? Like you, you see some trades go through and it's a bunch of stuff on one side. And we're looking at a start 10 right now. But it's Lamar Jackson and the one-on-one. Like that should be the conversation, right? Where we're talking big boy picks, big boy players. So yep, it's it's not just a oh let's plug this into my calculator. Yeah, well, it's yeah, it's, 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 it's even. It's exactly. fair. Look, the numbers line up. We don't need context. <laughs> Look at the numbers. Exactly. So we're gonna go to Jason. Thank you very much for the hammer. Appreciate it. So John, this is a twelve team super flex half PPR start nine. So shallow here. Quarterbacks are Stroud, Lamar, Fields, Gibbs, Gus. At uh, I'm sorry, Gibbs, Gus, Khalil Herbert, and Can. There's one trash can, John, at running back. Garrett Wilson, JSN, Christian Kirk, Shakir Mooney. And then at tight end, we have McBride and Goddard. Pick wise, 101, 108, 111, 211, 212. And then he has an extra 25 first and second. The question is, what to do with a 101? Do I take Marv? Do I trade back and get Neighbors Plus or Rome Plus? The activity level in this league is mid. Snuck into the playoffs and was runner-up in 23. Young wide receivers are hard to trade for, as they typically are, right? So shallow format here, John. 12-team super flex, half PPR, start nine, wondering what to do with a one-on-one. It doesn't matter who my quarterbacks are. At one point earlier in the offseason, I was thinking, okay, uh, you know, if I have a team like Jason where I have two, uh, you know, you guys call them hammers in Stroud and Lamar, then maybe I would look to go another direction with that 101, whether it's Marvin Harrison, see if I can package down. Uh, but with half PPR, start nine in a 12 team super flex league. You know, it doesn't even matter what the quarterback settings are. If it's plus six, minus four, plus four, minus two, I'm going Caleb Williams with a 101. And I think there's there's going to be an opportunity here with the 108 and 111 here. I think if we wanted to, Jason, 
we could package those up, get into the 104, 105 range, and that's when we can start to maybe look at a, a – I, I think Roma Dunze is going to be available there still. Uh, you could do something certainly involving the extra 25 first you have. Obviously, you're going to want some additional context there depending on sure. what type of team they have uh, for the first that you acquired. But with Garrett Wilson, I would look to package up like JSN, Khalil Shakir, uh, 108, 111, consolidate yeah, all right. of those into an absolute stud wide receiver, whether it's, uh, you know, I, if that's enough for Jamar Chase, probably not, but it, maybe you could get somebody interested. But with these league settings, uh, consolidate where we can, but at 101, yeah, I'm going Caleb Williams over Marv. That's that's tough. That's tough. Honestly, I don't want the 101 if, if this is my team, right? You're, you're looking at it. You got Stroud, Lamar, Fields. I mm -hmm. don't exactly want to take Caleb Williams 101. I'd love to take Marv at 102. So can you give me a little, a little piece? Does 102 have the ability to move up from you know the 211 to the 203? For example, just like hey, you want the you want the one on one, you can take the uh, yeah, take your player. I I don't love taking Caleb Williams here, but let let me ask you this, John. Before we move on to the next one, Fields. When you see Fields as the QB three, there does that make you feel good? What's up, Pittsburgh? You're a Pittsburgh I, fan. I am. I am. And on Dynasty Theory, I've been talking about how I have a statue of Russell Wilson outside of my front yard. Uh, so if we're going to get into a Fields, Russell Wilson discussion, I'm going to go with Russ, but Fields offers you so much upside and you're not relying on him for anything, especially with a strong foundation with Stroud and Lamar right. quarterback, but giving you the upside, this is a situation where unless there's like a really strong offer or again, something where I could package up and consolidate assets, I'm going to hang on to Fields here. But I, I know Jason mentioned, Hey, the activity le level, it's a little it's questionable. Mid. It's mid, as the kids say. Uh, you know, I, I, that that is a little bit of a worry. But with the 108, 111, I think we're going to get some juicy landing spots at the back end of the first round of the NFL draft with some of these wide receivers. I think we could see a really nice spot, obviously, with Brian Thomas, Xavier Worthy, Adonai Mitchell. Uh, you know, I see Mitch in the chat saying that I changed my camera setup again. I change it every single day. I, I can't figure it out, but look, look at know, bitch putting the F word up. Like we can't put the F word up on the screen, uh, the screen, but I just did. Right. What the F John changes camera setup again. I what, get what yelled at by we Dan. If I have any colorful language, <laughs> uh, but I do back to the traded hand. I do like your thought of just get anything. If, if, if you're able to get anything to with the one Oh two, I like, I have a gap, but it is close enough that get an early second and kick back that 211 like you mentioned clay for sure so let's go to Polly d got us three hammers thank you very much Polly d so it's a 12 team super flex half ppr start 10 herbert Tua, winston and trash cans at quarterback we have dobbins and hull <laughs> and izzy abanacanda is listed this is this is a first john uh, T. Judy, Marquise Brown, Cooks at wide receiver. Tight end is Mandrews and Jawan Johnson. All my own picks. <laughs> Robin, you gotta you gotta help me out here, bro. All my own picks. No, it's two, I, so I, I'm two oh nine, two eleven. Yeah, what do you see? What do you see here? What is X dot oh one, John? So, is this so a young they have thing? Uh, well, if it is, I wouldn't get it. But they have 101, 201, 301, 401. And, and then so also they have has 209 and 211. Yes. Got it. Got it. Okay. So has the, yeah, 101, 201, et cetera. Has the 209, 211, 225 first and 225 seconds. Activity level is mid. So this is the first year of a startup league bombed the draft, Pauly D says. League is half quote unquote need to win the trade and the other teams are what do you want for types with no offers ever sent i know all about this only one team sent away their first try to vote for max points four and no trade deadline but it's not looking like it so i can take the 101 next year as well 
So what do you think here, man? Just to uh, just to clean this up, Poly D has a 12-team super flex, half PPR, start 10. And uh, it, yeah, has the, has the 101. It's a shallow format. What, what do you think here? Half the league, I thought this was interesting. Half the week, league needs to win the trade. And the other teams are, hey, what do you want for such and such? So it sounds like a super casual one. What are you doing? Yeah, the, the what do you want for player x it gets so frustrating because at that point you're essentially negotiating against yourself and i don't know about you but i've seen people hey what do you want for so and so and i'm feeling generous and i'll go out and say okay this is what i'm looking for uh no i don't like that what else do you got then you're really negotiating against yourself and you lose i mean i know i know scott talks about leverage all the time you have no leverage in a situation like that absolutely no reason to give up information whenever you don't need to so with Herbert, Tua, T. Higgins, Hollywood Brown, and Mark Andrews, I mean, again, I'm still taking Caleb at the 101. You know, you're not putting yourself in a situation here by by going with maybe Marvin Harrison at 101 just because you have Herbert and Tua where you're then going to be in a situation to compete. What I would do, get the 101, obviously, you get Caleb Williams – you're consolidating a lot a lot of points at the quarterback position. Hang on to all of your 25 picks. You're going to have the 101 again next year. And with the wide receivers and the running backs next year, it's going to be interesting. But that might be an opportunity then to move off of that 101, collect additional assets. It's always difficult the first year immediately following the startup sure. because nothing has really changed in the minds of the managers. You know, Clay, you know, I, I sent an offer over to you. Well, I took him at 605. You're offering me yeah, somebody yeah, that right. you took in the seventh. Why would I do that? Like, and there, there is a little bit of that take lock. There's a little bit of that bias. Hey, my assets you know, are worth a little bit more than what you're looking to, to move, the endowment effect, if you will. But you're right. looking at these guys, and, you know, I think it's going to be very difficult right now. Can you go to the second comment? Yeah, yeah, that of Polly course. put up there. So only one team sent away their first. I guess the second one I might have just ditched, but only one team sent away their first. Tried to vote for max points for no trade that deadline, but it's not looking like it. it. It seems like he's like ready to play ball, ready, ready to you know take the training wheels off a little bit here, John. You know, on some on some dynasty football, but it's just not happening with this league. <laughs> No, they're so, they're keeping the training wheels on. They're saying let's let's stick to our trikes here. Uh with I want to blow team, it up. I want to blow it up e I, even I, I, even more, right, John? Like a, the absolutely it, it's it's a shallow league. You hate to do that. It, it should be a short rebuild if it's a start 10, but I mean look at the look at the pieces here. I, I want my I want the 25 101 with, with my own pick. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to yep. sweat the activity level of this league right now. I'm going to, I'm going to look out for myself. I'm going to look out for my own team. Everything is on the block. And, and I, uh, right. And, and I wouldn't worry about the activity level right now because it is going to pick up, especially with only one manager moving the 25 first up to this point. You know, I think as the season comes along and the season progresses and Hey, I'm three and oh, I'm four and oh, but now I have an injury. Okay, now I'm gonna be looking to make a move. I don't think you're right. gonna see a lot of moves made unless the the teams really see a need to do so. You know, based on what information we have from Polly, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of trading just a trade. But again, I think things could open up after uh this offseason with it being the startup offseason. Absolutely. So we have from the uh, from the crowd here, Zeb nine three seven twelve team one QB start eight was offered Rice for the three oh one today. Smashed. So I I heard you guys talking Rashi Rice on your last on your last pod. Yeah, look at look at John slinging the sledgehammer there. Go ahead, talk about Rashi Rice, man. Well, my son, uh, he's turning five here in August. He's really into Marvel. And he has one of the little Thor hammers, the Mjolnir. And I thought maybe there was one laying around here that I could pick up and smash <laughs> live on the show. L listen, let's say he, let's say he gets suspended six games. He is still a talented receiver, an absolutely asinine thing to do off the field. 
absolutely no reason for it. But in a, a one quarterback league, in a start eight where you're, you're, you know, minimal starting requirements, I would be willing to even move one twelve in the situation, honestly. And I oh, would have I, absolutely, an absolutely, yeah. So the, the three hundred one is. The three of ones bonkers. Basically, we're taking this trade out of the uh, out of the question. Uh, almost asking what you think about Rashi Rice. So, yeah, even six game suspension. Like, I mean, it, it is dynasty, right? So bet on bet on the talent and wait if you if you can slash want to. You you look at what he did his rookie season. I know the knock on him. A lot of people are going to say, well, they were kind of manufactured touches, right? A lot of things close to the line of scrimmage. A dot, it was the lowest in the league, I think, across all wide receivers, uh, certainly across just the rookies, but over 2.35 yards per route run. If you go back and look with his volume and that type of efficiency and production in a Patrick Mahomes led offense, like there aren't, you, you go look at the list of receivers that have accomplished that feat. It is banger after banger after banger. Go all the way back to 2008. And there's not going to be one bust on that list with that volume. So I, I think the touches were manufactured, but he really didn't play early to start the season all that much. He he got used a little bit more. Travis Kelsey, as, as much as I don't want it to happen, that age cliff is going to hit eventually, and it's going to hit him hard. It, it uh, looks like it's hitting, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I say I don't want it to happen. I, I'm still like 20, 25% roster ship, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. And you know, trying to unload a few of the pieces, but uh, it's tough to move Travis Kelsey, a 34 year old tight end in April. But with Rasheed Rice, I just, I, I think his route tree will grow. He's developed that rapport very early with Patrick Mahomes. Uh, just stop with the bonehead things off the field. Yeah, I, I know it's, it's tough. It's tough. It, it really is. I won't even speak to that, but that's the, that's the thing with Rashi Rice. And and players like him, you're attached to Mahomes. You have you have liquidity, like for for days, right? I mean, not as long as Mahomes. His look at look, dynasty, look but... at Quentin Johnston still after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, still, of course. I know he's holding on because he's got Herbert and everybody else. And left, nothing else, right? He he he's moving for two hundred three, two hundred four still. Oh, and that's please. after a, a horrid rookie season. And like you said, he's tied to Herbert. There's nothing else there. And, you know, Harbaugh's in there now, so they're going to run the ball 99% of the time. That's what I heard on Twitter. But, uh, you know, like, it's just crazy. So you certainly have the liquidity with, with Rasheed Rice, even if he misses several games in 2024. John, are you going Quentin Johnston or a 26 second? Second. <laughs> All day, right? But, uh, Any second. Bye-bye. Uh, you know, 2024 to 12, he's gone. Uh, 2025, any second, 26, any second. Um, I just 312, they, 312 this year, John. <laughs> 312. He's, he's, he's the kind of thing you play in a million leagues, so you want to have some exposure just to just to diversify against your gut, right? But yes, you're you're down to sell him. No, I will, I will buy at. Like I have him tiered with the 306 right now, honestly. Like okay. that's where yeah, I perfect. am. And the fact that you you might have been joking when you asked me 312, but the fact that I had to even really think about <laughs> it, that tells you a lot. It, it looked like the screen had frozen, honestly. Oh, I was like, man, I've got him, I've got him frozen, lock solid frozen. And I, I my internet, I was on a work call today and I got bumped off of it. My internet been a little frustrating today. Uh, if Mitch is still in the chat, he'll tell you my internet's frustrating all the time, but specifically today. So I'm trying to work. Oh, oh you're you're good, man. My my internet was trash last night, and I swear it is the fact that we're streaming across multiple Twitter handles along mm -hmm. with along with YouTube. But who knows? Whatever. We got first world problems, right? Complaining about this, I know, this technology. I know. Right? We're we're talking about Dynasty football live. <laughs> so. Someone bought us a hammer. Thank you very much, someone. It says, for Scott, rookie pick war. So wins above replacement. 
In a 16-team start 11, does war go negative 30% later than your stock example leaks? Thanks. Let's see if you can. So the second part is for Scott, rookie pick war, oh, it's exactly the same thing. Roman, that's the two of two is the same as the one of two. No, so John, war. Do you uh do you look at this? Do you look at wins above replacement? Scott is big into it, you know, looking at not the players, the position. I I do. And I actually had a conversation with one of our patrons because it was a really funky league that they were in a in, uh wrapping up or they were in a rookie draft. So they already had the startup that took place. And I said, send me your username on sleeper and send me the league name. So I, I see Jeremy in the chat. I went over to dynastydaddy.com. I put in the Twitter handle. I pulled the league. And you can see right in there the, the warp and the war. And you hit the nail on the head. The player names don't really matter. But you can see the shift in the positional value overall. So running back 12 is valued against whatever wide receiver 24. And then if you go into a typical 12-team start 10, two PPR league for tight ends. That's uh, most of the leagues I play in. Maybe it, it shifts this way, but with these funky scoring settings, it's this. So to an extent, yes, I, I, I know Scott is really into it. Um, and I, I do think it's a useful resource and something that you need to be looking at, especially when you get into leagues outside of the normal settings, because yeah, yeah. like I have my tier sheet up right now and it's a, 12 team super flex plus six minus four for quarterbacks PPR two PPR for tight ends, but you have to relevant with some, with some funky league settings. It could be exactly. Garbage. Yes. You, you have to, you have to adjust. Even if you have your own rankings, you have your own tiers. So looking at this from a 16 team start 11 lens, there are going to be things that you certainly need to account for. So uh, I'm not Scott, but you know, I, yeah, yeah, no, no, for I, sure. I look at it a little bit. No, absolutely. And the, and I'll save it for Scott and we'll we'll have him address it quickly too. But yes, no, I mean it's 16 team start 11. Woof. Woof. I was in tough on the streets with those flexes, right? <laughs> like you're trying I was to find just one, a living breathing body there. I was in one with the NFL rough draft guys and it was a 20 team league start 11, two of them had to be tight ends. <laughs> uh Needless to say, after three years, the league ultimately folded because sure. no nobody wanted to keep taking on orphans uh, whenever it was a 20-team league, no additional copies. But yeah, they can be uh, the, the deeper leagues, they can be they can be something. They they can be aggressive. And and when you're yeah, when you're in a bad spot with a league like that, and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna stop paying attention to it. That's how a league like that folds. It has to be mm -hmm. a serious group of players. So under the gun. I'm not positive we have a hammer attached to this, but three hammers. So that's $15 from Buy Me a Coffee. Thank you so much. They only take a 6%, I believe, rake, unlike the 30%, John, that uh, that YouTube takes. I love YouTube, right? But it says, <laughs> um, under the gun says, Shane is a legend. Yes, he is, man. He is yes, a legend. He, he is a legend. Honestly, like he... Yeah, he's he's literally my first uh DTHQ was my first Patreon membership. Shane was my first relationship in the industry. I will always love that guy. Okay, so yeah, I know sappy and, and precious. Let's go to Groove, two hammers. Thank you very much. John, 12 team, one QB, PPR start eight. So super shallow here. Purdy and trash cans a quarterback. We have Jacobs, Kendra Miller, and that's it at running back. Justin Jefferson, Garrett Wilson, Judy, Jamo, Demario, Shahid at wide receiver, Kittle, Dulcich, and Fant at tight end. We have the 101, 6, 7, 9, 10, 201, and he has his own 25 first, looking for pick strategy or any trades. And it looks like here, let me just rip this off real quick. We'll have to overpay to make trades happen in this league. Commission put a vote forward to make it a super flex league, but up in the air. Activity is mid. Four point per passing touchdown. He's tried to trade for wide receiver, or I'm sorry, tried to trade for running backs or another hammer wide receiver with no success. Okay, so it sounds like this is a tough lead 
league to trade in, John, right? I do love to see the fact that they're addressing should they make it a super flex. That's a sign mm -hmm. of a healthy league. But 12 team, one QB, start eight. Let's assume it's tough to trade in this league. What are you doing here with those picks? It's got a lot of picks. Yeah, a, a few things. One, if you do transition to a super flex league, I, I want the two year buffer. Yes. So yes. if if you pass this vote now, you have all of 24, all of 25, and then 2026. 20, uh, I'm actually going through that in a league right now. And really, like the first rookie draft after the vote passed was, I mean, it was almost what it looks like in a typical super flex. What was it heavy as if it was a super flex? Yeah. Nice. It was because you had people that you had people that maybe just have one quarterback like a uh, sitting here like Brock Purdy and, and garbage cans after him because it's a one quarterback league. You're not really making that a priority. So I do want to see that buffer if you are transitioning into a super flex league. And then with the picks here specifically, if we stay put. So if Groove isn't making any trades here, Marvin Harrison at 101. I'm assuming Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze go at two and three. Without a tight end premium, I don't think I would take Brock Bowers at four, but there's a good chance he goes at four or five. Brian Thomas being the other one at six, probably looking at a Xavier Worthy, seven, running back one off the board. And honestly, at nine or 10, I know it's a one quarterback league, but the fact that it's plus four for passing touchdowns, mm. I might look at I, it, as crazy as it sounds, a Jaden Daniels as the first quarterback off the board in a league like this. Yeah, sure. Because right, ju right. just start eight, love it. Just strictly go upside. You're, you're not worried about, okay, if, if he completely flames out, you don't have so much value. Uh, invested in him, and I love Brock Purdy, but in a plus four passing touchdown league, I want somebody that can offer me a little bit more upside, and I think that's somebody like Jaden Daniels. Uh, and then right. so twelve team, uh, you could probably get another running back in there at two hundred one, uh, either another running back or maybe you get somebody like a depending on landing spot of Malachi Corley, maybe you can get a uh, boy, Franklin, a Donnie Mitchell, depending on obviously like, I don't know about you, Clay, but this year I feel like more than ever outside of the top seven or mm, top nine guys, I would say at this point, I'm going to include JJ McCarthy and Brian Thomas sure. outside of the top nine with running back and wide receiver. We're going to see a lot of movement compared to post or pre NFL draft values when we get landing spots and draft capital, like there's a good chance that the running back one, if they go to Dallas or the chargers, they get bumped up into that one Oh eight, one Oh nine tier. And I'm oh, saying this sure. in, in, you know in it's super flex, in super flex, right? Yeah. So even in super flex, certainly in one quarterback, but that's my thought with the picks that you have. I think you have enough there that you can hammer home running back and wide receiver, take Marvin Harrison at one Oh one, Look at an upside quarterback later in the first. Uh, keep your own 25 first. Hang on to oh. that thing as it's if in it's a vault. It, it's in a vault. <laughs> as if it's your child. Don't let that thing go. You know, uh, you got to cradle it. Uh, but I, I love having Justin Jefferson, Garrett Wilson, uh, it, assuming no tight end premium. So I'm fine with Kittle for the time being. But right now, I. I would look, I would shop Kittle around. I would do something involving uh, Jamison Williams, Demario Douglas, and maybe your 106 and see if you get up to like 103. I, it's doubt, doubtful. I think that's going to set an unrealistic expectation. No, no. But, uh, but you get the idea. Consolidate. Yeah. For sure. In the in the Purdy, in the in the one QB, like you were talking about, you're looking for more upside. Again, you know, can you move from Purdy to anything below? Because how much does how much does QB matter right now in this format? This is it, it sounds like just my vibe from reading the comments is it's gonna be tough to to trade in this league. So if there's one draft where you want to have some picks and you're a rebuild 
right? It's it's a wide receiver class. You have the six, seven, nine, ten. Have fun with it. I'm more than happy to make a bunch of picks with this team, and and, and yeah. just hope and just hope. And and I love how you said Jaden Daniels in, in this kind of format, 100, because he could end up being very relevant in the super flex format. In the meantime, he could put up crooked numbers as a one QB format. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and it, it would shift a little bit, obviously, if it was plus six for passing touchdowns. Right. Uh, and you can tell from my answers on previous questions that I'm in super flex formats. I'm Caleb Williams 101, no matter what. But to, again, talking about the the war and the warp and, and things being adjusted based on league settings, it's going to be critical there. But yeah, like you said, in a league that's not really keen on making too many moves at this point in time, that's a fun build to have with all of those picks at your disposal. Yeah, because he, he said you have to overpay to be able to get something done. He, he doesn't have the assets to be able to overpay. Mm-hmm. Be like, let, let me pile four picks together and get a and get a hammer. He doesn't have that flexibility, but right. good, good time to be able to make the picks. Let's go to Gomez with the three hammers. Thank you very much. This is a 12-team super flex tight end premium PPR start 10. Gino and a rich look, look at this. Let, let me start by saying this Gino trumps a rich as the <laughs> first quarterback mentioned he even beats Levis. How, how would you, how would you order these? Right? No. So it's a uh, Gino, a rich Levis Minshew at quarterback JT, James cook, Camara, Connor, and Moss. And also has Gus and, and four to Dobbins. Sorry, horrible reading, but he has a good QB or uh, running back room. Has AJ Brown, Alave, Christian Watson, Shakir, Burks. <laughs> Just naming trash cans. That's my problem. Has McBride, Higby, and Mayer at tight ends. Here's an inbox offer. So Connor in the 207, F word. Connor or the 207. Is what it looks like. What do you think here? I'm actually going to take the 207. Uh, <laughs> if it were a super late second. So the, the way I, I look at these picks each and every year, uh, we, we're heading into the the rookie season and we're going through the NFL combine and we're going through pro days and the interviews and the NFL draft and everybody's super excited. Well, oh my gosh, this, this class is so deep. We, these you know, mid and late seconds are just a tremendous value. Once the NFL draft hits, we're going to get some ugly landing spots and we're going to get some unsavory draft capital that was a little di- different than what was expected. So if it were a late, late second, okay, I can get on board there. But with 207, especially in a super flex league, I mean, there's a there's a very good chance we get five quarterbacks. I think I think there's a chance Bo Nix creeps up. I don't think it's going to be Penix. I think Nix has a chance to creep up uh, I, with all the wide receivers. I just don't think you need to make that move today for a player like James Conner. Do I think he's could have a very strong 2024 season? Sure, but with that pick, it's That's still a gift. It's, it's it's a d- gift, right? The two oh seven, mm-hmm. John. It's like just just hit accept and deal with it. It's, yeah, a, so it's an out on James Conner. I want the two oh seven because not only then can you can you move that elsewhere, you could package it up with some of these other pieces. It gives you increased flexibility. You have that insulation for at least the next you know three weeks or so. It, it's two oh seven over Connor for me. And I see a comment in yeah. the chat from from Ray. Ray Caleb's going to be a bust. Ray in the, in the no, crowd Ray, Ray Wilson. Ray Wilson. Oh. Caleb, Caleb's going to be a bust. It's going to be a bust? Really? We're, we're, we're going there? Come on. Is he, though? Bust. So he says, it's funny that everybody thinks Caleb's already a, a legend. He will be a bust. Ray, explain yourself. Explain yourself in the comments. Let's hear it. He, he, he very, he, you know, he could be a bust. But if we're looking at the realistic range of outcomes, I... I'm certainly looking at him to be maybe not the second coming of Christ, but he's still going to be pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have to make bets, right? 
we have to make bets in this game and he's a good profile to bet on. So the second part of this was who are you taking at fourth overall leaning wide receiver if neighbors and ride QB room till the 25 class. But if Daniel slash may are there and it's Dunze or them thoughts, I'm defending champ going for two more. So yeah, we're roundabout going back to this, but 12 team super flex start 10. We have the inbox offer. We already took the 207. We got the 207 for James Conner. We're, we're stoked about it. Who are you taking at 104? If, if Neighbors is there, perfectly fine with that. I have an issue uh, with the comment about holding off on quarterback waiting for the 25 class. I would not be looking positively at that class as things stand today could things change certainly could we get a late riser like a jay burrow a Jaden daniels type situation sure but at this point in time as things stand today the 2025 quarterback class is not going to be a strength can you can you do some other things involving quarterbacks already in the league sure but depending on what happens at that 103 i would be more inclined to take Jaden daniels if Jaden daniels goes 103 then I would probably go either uh, Neighbors or Adunze. I have them tiered together. And Drake May, I'm not as sold on Drake May as as some of the you know, truthers are, but I also think he's getting a, some unwarranted negative press because prospect fatigue comes into play and it happens every of every course. single year you know drake may was one of those hot names caleb williams was a hot name like we've been hearing about these guys marvin harrison we just so eventually we we look at them under a microscope and people want to pick them apart so i think drake may he again i think he's going to be better than worst case scenario but there are still some concerns in my mind so Jaden daniels if daniels is gone i would go wide receiver so, but it's not because I'm excited about the 25 rookie class looking at quarterbacks. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. And and you've been playing for longer than I have. I think I'm on year five. So is, is it a situation with this QB class, even if you're in a rebuild, right, and you can't afford to package a bunch of assets together to move up into this class, but do you want to take advantage of the quarterbacks that we think are good you know, good profiles, like, you know, that quote unquote locks to hit as opposed to going with the 2025 class speaks to me about that. Like when do you pay up for quarterbacks that you quote unquote know are going to be good? Uh, I, you know, I think it can be, and there's a lot of gray area here, but I think it could sure. be a situation, you know, especially if you're rebuilding and you have some of these questionable assets that, maybe people see in the community is having high upside getting maybe that safer higher end asset in, in one of these quarterbacks i would certainly be okay with now the big winner here with the 25 class as it stands today i think it's going to be a lot of these bridge quarterbacks or maybe not bridge mm -hmm. but some of these veterans like a, a player like uh you know a uh, matthew stafford a geno smith a Derek carr not sexy names by any means but they put themselves in a situation as long as they're not retiring. I'm looking at you, Matthew Stafford, then you, you can get production from them. But like the, the one Oh four, the one Oh five, I, I would like to package up and, and move up to the one Oh one if possible. And if you think you're in a league where the one Oh one is going to go wide receiver after that moves made, I would look to do it for the one Oh two. But like if I had to make a move to go from May to Caleb Williams, th there's certainly a price point. I would be like 104 and 112 to start. Can I okay. get up to yeah. Caleb Williams for that? Like that, that'd be a starting point, but I, there is some wiggle room there for me. How much wiggle room would you tack on? So 104, 112, would you throw two seconds? Would you throw a, Call it a late 24 second and a 25 second. Or are you letting seconds get in the way? Do you care that much about getting Caleb? Start 10. Okay. So the seconds aren't yeah. you know, critical to you. 
start 10 or less, yeah, I, I still would be willing to do that if I'm including like the 112. Now it gets a little trickier if we're doing something with the 108 or 109 because I do have, you know, a, a solid tier break in between yeah. there when we're looking at a McCarthy or a Brian Thomas. Good stuff there. So Trojan Man has a hammer for us, John. Thank you very much. It is a 12-team Superflex Start 10 PPR. Quarterbacks are Lamar Stafford. At running back, we have Bijan, Chubb, Aaron Jones, Mostert, Chuba Hubbard, and Trash Cans. Chase, Debo, Ayuk, Cup, <laughs> Dude, Dudu Smith, Schuster. Oh, I remember. I remember Trojan Man here. <laughs> Dudu Smith Schuster at, at a wide receiver. Andrews at tight end and has the 104. He says, Remember me? Yes, very much so. I traded with the devil who had the 101, 103, 104. Traded the 102 and 303 for the 104 and tank. Then traded Flowers Tank and the 10, or I'm sorry, then traded Flowers Tank and the 209. In the 25 first for Jefferson. And then he names off a, another cascade trade that he pulled off. He said, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was another part asking for, for war ideas. And there was 19 other players at, uh, mentioned. 12 team super flex <laughs> start 10 PPR. What are you, what are you doing with this team? Yes, we do remember you Trojan man. We're going to get a fresh look from John Bauer. What are you doing with this team? So Lamar Stafford, Bijan Chubb, Aaron Jones, Moster Chuba, uh, solid running back room, some nice veteran pieces there to pair with Bijan, Chase Debo, Ayu Cup, uh, Andrews. I'm assuming no tight end premium 104. I mean, it, it's certainly a team that should be able to compete. You know, it's good, I right. It, like, does does QB make you feel a little? A little, a little gross. Do you want to get up and get a get a better QB or buy a vet? I I would like to do. I, I don't know if it would be something involving Stafford. Now, if it's a situation where a team maybe they put a higher end quarterback on the block and they only have two quarterbacks as is, you might need to incorporate Stafford in that trade. But based on where his current market is, you know, on on Dynasty Daddy ADP is coming at quarterback twenty six. I, I have him one tier above that. So in most situations, I'm not looking to move him. But if I could do, I mean, fuck, can you do like 104? See what the DAC manager is looking at at the quarterback position. You okay. know, like I think DAC, he continues to be severely undervalued. Can we do something? Uh, da, 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 da. You so know, what's the we, it, let, what's the delta here, John? One hundred and four and Dak. What's what's missing? What's missing on one side or another? I would say, I if I'm acquiring Dak with that one hundred and four, I I really don't know if you need to add all that much, which is crazy. But again. I think even though we're only in April and there are no rosters and no lineups being set anytime soon, I think people are going to look at their quarterback situation and they're going to think, okay, well, I need to backfill the quarterback position. I can't move off of Dak and leave myself in a, in a sticky situation. But 104, I mean, I saw a trade recently. It was 107, like 201 in a late second for Dak in a 12 team super flex. Love that. Love like, that. If the 107 is the first piece, right? That's yeah. That's so, gold. All day. So I, I honestly, I don't know that you need to add all that much. Like uh, Drake may right now, he's quarterback 17. Dax quarterback 13. You could probably get away with adding an early second. I think that would be enough because I have, I honestly, I wouldn't move Dak or I wouldn't move the one one for Dak, but from a value perspective, I don't think they're, they shouldn't be as far off as they are. Exactly. Dak just has that perma stink on him. Perma stink. Like, I, I, like he, he's 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 pretty good, right? I mean, you you could probably speak more to the numbers. I don't want to talk out of turn, but he just has that stink on him. The likability factor just does not exist with Dak ever. And it's crazy because, like, forget about fantasy. Forget about actual football. He seems like a good dude off the yeah, field. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. But 
we don't like that. We don't like the fact that he's putting up top three or four quarterback numbers when he really doesn't have much rushing upside uh, to begin with. I, I see open 24 hours, Brett Dak about to get cut. Uh, yeah, the Trey Lance truthers can finally rejoice then, right? Uh, yeah. But that if Dak's out of Dallas, then he's going to have a fantastic opportunity elsewhere. Uh, but anyway, I don't want to get too hung up on Dak. But yeah, I, I would be looking to do something there with that quarterback room. Don't love my only quarterbacks being Lamar and Stafford. But with the rest of that roster, I think there's certainly pieces that you could do uh, you could certainly package together to to get something done there at quarterback. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm, I'm reading the comments here. Oh, oh you're back you're and good. forth on Caleb Williams. Oh no, you're good, man. It's it's awesome that you're reading those. Yeah, we're 45 minutes in. We have 671 eyeballs watching us. John, the, you're a uh, you're a friend of the show. This is your second time being on here, but tell us uh, tell us about yourself. We're not done yet, by the way. If you're listening to this, don't bounce on on YouTube. I'm just I'm just saying what's up to John. We're 45 minutes in. Here here comes the pleasantries. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm on Twitter at the Bauer Club. I'm not super active on there. Really, just plugging our content uh, over at Dynasty Theory. We have the YouTube channel. We have the Patreon. We have the a free Discord with conversations going 24-7. If you check out our YouTube in the episode descriptions, you can find the links to all of our stuff in there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, no, you're, you're, you're I, fine. I, I, I don't want to make you talk about I, yourself. but we. I, li- I live in Pittsburgh. We, Like I said, I have the Russell Wilson yeah. statue out front now. Uh, you know, you like uh, Twizzlers pull and peel, you know, that kind of stuff. Like we can get, I, we can get <laughs> I'm like, like Easter was great because my kids got so much candy and I'm like the sugary junk candy kind of guy. So like the, oh, Starburst, yeah. oh, me too. the Smarties, yeah. oh, like just sure. the absolute worst, just like straight sugar. Just but it's fantastic. Oh, oh it's my fantastic. God. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, we uh, we're we're trying to be selective in terms of you know these hammer streams who we bring on. We love how you guys break down dynasty trades. You know, you look well, at I it the way that. you do, but you're different. You're different, but you break down. It's about logic, process. Love it. Anyway, enough said. Russell and just and just, and just yeah, a quick up? plug to my two co-hosts, Mitch and Dan. You know, it's we've been doing it the the podcast together for. Mitch and I are on five years. Dan joined a year later, but all three of us bring very different perspectives. I'm more of a numbers and analytically inclined person. Dan used to coach football, so he's very film oriented. Right. Mitch kind of goes in the middle a little bit, uh, but both of them like to egg me on and get me going on the show. So they have that in common, but three very different yeah. perspectives. And, and we, we do, we mesh well together. You, you definitely do. And uh, and yeah, congrats on the recent 1,000 subscribers on Thank YouTube. You. Go check them out, Dynasty Theory on YouTube. Yeah, their stuff is fire. You uh, you hopefully are enjoying this so far. So Russell Y, got us a hammer. Thank you very much. This is a 12-team super flex, start 10, half PPR, four point per passing touchdown. We've got Burrow Murray at quarterback. Spears and any RB on a 53 at running back. Uh, JJ Pickens downs Curtis Samuel at wide receiver. Kincaid at tight end. Pickwise has the 102, 3, 6, 201, 202, 225 first and 225 seconds. The trade here, John, again, this is 12 team super flex start 10. Give JJ. Get Puka an early 25 first and the 206. And this question is keep Pickens or look to tear up. Let's not address Pickens yet. What are you doing with this trade? Give JJ, get Puka in an early 25 first. How Ooh. confident, Russell, am Ooh. I in that 25 first being early? What a and trade. When we, say, when we say earlier, we saying 101, 102, 103, 104. Let, let's call you it know, crystal ball, John. Crystal ball, John. This is the 103 in 2025. Like, I love Justin Jefferson. I mean, I got, where is he over here? Uh, signed helmet over there. Yeah. I, I think Puka, he's a stud. 
And I, there is obviously a gap there, but with this team, I and don't. It's a, and it's a half PPR. Does that matter? Does half that matter PPR. to you, John? With with the 25, 25 picks, it's supposed to be a good running back class. I don't know if I care too much about half PPR with wide receivers. I don't know if I care more than I should. Go ahead. No, no, I agree with that. And I, you know, what is it going to look like there in Minnesota with Justin Jefferson? And is he even going to remain in Minnesota? Uh, and obviously the half PPR is somebody absolutely peppered with targets like Puka Nakua. I, I think that would have an impact on him as well. But, oh, man, with this team, Burrow, Murray, I, really nothing at running back. Wide receiver fairly I'm weak. I'm doing it. I'm, t- I, give me the package. I, I'm talking myself into this, Clay, as we're working through it. Right. I would. I would take Puka, the 25 first, and the 206. And then, uh, not to move on too quickly, but with Pickens, I would look to add something to Pickens to tear up if possible. So you would try to tear up because I was going to ask, all right, so what are we doing with the 10236? So we have a 12. nice team here. We can't get too cute, even though it's a start 10. It's right, so a pretty shallow. We're, we're not getting too cute. Don't worry. You don't, don't think worry. we're getting too cute? <laughs> yeah, so it, at, at 102, we're going to land Marvin. All right. At 103, I don't hate. Let's see, but it's the half PPR also. I don't want to load up it. Like, I know you have Burrow and Murray. I talked about Jaden Daniels earlier. I would probably go that direction. Four and then one o- touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then with the 106, then you can probably get like an Adunze or, uh, you know, no tight end premium, not overly interested in Brock once you have Kincaid as well. So, and then at 201, 202. I think you can slam home two running backs there. Yeah. But, but so with Pickens, the reason I say I mm. might be looking to package uh, or, or, you know, package up with him, I think he is a little overvalued, to be honest with you. And even if maybe you can't tear up, I don't mind the idea of pivoting off of him. I, I know, listen, I know George Pickens is a very divisive player. Uh, the raw talent is there. Can he keep right. his head on straight? Keep his his uh, temper at bay? Stay off of social media, and you know all these kids are like, yeah, just calm down, this. basically. Just, just calm, calm down, down and play bit. football. You're super talented, right? I, <laughs> I I would I would look to move off of Pickens, whether it's a tear up situation. I wouldn't be looking to add too many pieces, though, depending on what we're looking at. But I do think like. I would love to do like right now, George Pickens wide receiver 27 on dynasty daddy ADP uh, DK Metcalf wide receiver 24. Like you really don't need to do too much there. And sure. personally, I, I prefer DK even though we're getting, you know, the little three years older there, but uh, not to get too hung up on specific names. I would test the market to see what it looks like to package up and then maybe do a lateral move. Um, well, lateral in my mind, but something that you could get a plus with a similar uh, uh, wide receiver that you're going to yeah, get similar production, production from. Right. 109 or George Beckins. 109. I, I will absolutely smash Brian Thomas over George Pickens. 111 or George Pickens. 111, still closer, but I think once we get one or two of those running backs. Yeah, all, all of a sudden it's gonna 111 is gonna look just as good, if not better, than Pickens. And that's also with the expectation, Clay. Like I mentioned, I think Bo Nix sneaks into the first run of the NFL draft. We may not like Bo Nix from a prospect perspective, but we see the the insulation even with poor performance that these first round quarterbacks have. So we talk about being able to move like the lo- liquidity of a Rasheed Rice earlier in the show. We're going to get that if Bo Nix can land in the first round. But even with the running backs there in that range, I'm going to go with either of them over Pickens. Given the choice, I would not add to Pickens though. I, I have them 
within the same tier, but I didn't want to give a cop out answer and just say equal value. So no, no, yeah. You, you guys don't give cop out answers. <laughs> that, that's why we love you. We, we, you you break everything down. You you make I don't I sit on the fence quite often. My uh my rear end hurts sometimes sitting on that <laughs> fence. And Mitch and Dan keep me in line. They're, they're like, pick a side. It is Pickens the type of guy though? And for me, for me, he is Pickens, DK, they're those lottery ticket players to where you play in what some ungodly amount of leagues 60 or something like that what you want to have a percentage of those kinds of players right to to go against your gut if you don't like them yeah for the most like but if they suck you're like i'm just i I, i'm good having zero percent i'm not saying yeah sucks but yeah no for the most part like for better or worse, I, I live and die by my tears, to be honest with you. It's something that I provide on the Dynasty Theory Patreon, and it's something that I truly believe in. And the, the things are adjusting, yeah. and they're moving constantly because values shift each and every single day in the Dynasty community whenever it's supposed to be a long-term game. But the short-term production and value fluctuations, have the, you know they're so critical. Uh, but for the most part, if I think somebody is a player I'm looking to sell. Like it's so tough to then go out and pay their current market to try to get just a few shares. If I didn't land them, maybe in a rookie draft or a startup later than maybe they should have been going. So there's a lot of players that I have in my sheets marked in red because they're for me, a sell that my roster ship is just extremely low. Yeah. So I've been a Patreon of, uh, or a patron rather of dynasty theory for a long time. And, uh, and yeah, you guys hook it up with your tears, your colored tears, and I'm glad you stay true to them, right? You, you, uh, you're, you're walking the walk. You're not a, a fantasy fraud as some, uh, as some people say, right? Yeah. I'm walking the walk and I'm just hoping, you know, my values and the tears don't leave me crippled and I can continue to walk. And I'm not, not just go <laughs> moving along in a wheelchair because of it. You know, what's so great is we, we have so many fantasy receipts, uh, bookmarks if, if they want it, right. If they, if they want it, we've got, we've got some great sound bites. I was like, here, let me, let me tee John up with the, with the one eleven or George Pickens. Let's, let's go. No. So, uh, so Chad Parsons here put into, he's a great option to add to a bigger consolidation deal. Exactly. Right. You capitalize on the fact that he does have a live market. And if you don't like him like you do, hey, <laughs> if this other person likes him, tack on a little something, get a player you like, then there you go. That's how, that's how 100%. you do it. And, and I think there, I mean, I think there is an opportunity, just like Chad said, you know, George Pickens is obviously right now the Steelers wide receiver one. And that might carry a little bit more weight than when you look at a player like a Devontae Smith that is, is playing with A.J. Brown. You know, I know there's question marks with Jalen Hurts. Can he can he continue to improve, or is he just going to really be seen by a lot of people as that rushing quarterback? Uh, even though I think certainly he's done enough, but I think there is a market and efficiency, and there are opportunities out there. So I, I think that's a great comment there from Chad. Indeed, John, we're going to end it here, but plug your plug your Patreon, plug whatever you want to plug. Right, the most important thing for you, go for it. Floor is yours. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, we, we talked about the Patreon. It's five bucks a month. You get a discount if you sign up for the whole year. We do a weekly episode of the Pivot Point. We talk about market inefficiencies. We do different things that the patrons are suggesting. Right now, we're in the process. We did a redraft of the 2021 rookies. We're doing 2022 this week, 2023 next week. And then we're leading into our live draft shows. Uh, we're going to be live Thursday on YouTube starting at 7.30 for the NFL draft. And then uh, we're starting at 6 p.m. Eastern on Friday. So we're starting an hour before the draft starts, recap day one, and kind of run through all of that. So it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of great conversations. But yeah, that, that's kind of it. I always appreciate getting to chop it up with you, Clay. Uh, I know yeah, last man. time I was on, Mitch, Mitch and I were on, I, I was talking about listening to pop 2k on Sirius. listen to 50 cent <laughs> yeah um, yeah and I, act, I just got rid of Sirius, so now i'm no longer listening to pop 2k it's a sad day it's a sad day, <laughs> it's a sad day. no yeah the the show we did we've recorded 
with you and and Mitch. And it is number five all time in terms of like this, you know, period in terms of like right. the, the drop number five all time in terms of popularity. So that that's that's, awesome. that's it, it is awesome, right? No, it was it was such a fun show. So Q Mac, I'll just address this. So Q Mac says, guess my hammer didn't go through. I guarantee it went through. It's just going to make it on the uh, on the next stream. So you may be primetime Tuesday or, uh, yeah, I do pop up streams as well because you know, who doesn't want to always be live, right? Every single day. John, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Friend of the show. Thanks to everyone. We got 711 eyeballs watching. Hit that like, hit that heart, whatever you see in front of you. Appreciate it. Easiest way to help out the channel. We're going to end this stream. Have a good night.